Hello and thanks for clicking this video. My name is Felix and today I want to show you how you can easily host your own video meeting server with the help of Copano Meet and the new Meet appliance powered by Univention. For this I'm going to show you what exactly is Copano and what is Copano Meet. Then I'm going to show you the versions that are available of Meet and we're going to download the appliance from the Univention homepage um, we'll go through the first setup of it and then I'm going to show you how you can use Meet and why you want to use Meet. But first, what is Copano? Copano is a 100% open source collaboration suite. It brings parts for group work collaboration like email, calendar and contacts. It allows you to share your mailbox with other people on the same server. And it also brings um, plugins for working with files and sharing files through, for example, email. There is a real-time communication part in this groupware as well, which was previously um, filled with Copano web meetings, and which we have recently replaced with the new Copano Meet, which is what I'm going to show you today. And what exactly is Copano Meet? Copano Meet offers you video meetings, not more and not less. It just requires a browser. It doesn't need for you to sign up accounts for using with guest users. Um, you only need accounts for your own users, obviously. Meet is realized as a so-called progressive web app, which means that it runs completely in the browser. And if you like, you can, with a simple click, install it to your device so you have it ready whenever you need it. Meet in its architecture is really lightweight. It uses state of the APIs, for example, WebRTC for the actual video communication part. And it uses other APIs, for example, OpenID Connect to facilitate the login for users and guests. If you want to integrate it with your own set of applications, then you can use Glue.js for a visual integration and to handle the com communication between your application and Meet. And since it's using WebRTC for the actual communication between clients, it also means that all communication is end-to-end -end encrypted. So how can you use Meet? Meet is available in a few different flavors. The easiest way to use it is with the hosted edition of Copano Meet, which I will tell you a bit more about in the next slide. What we're going to focus on today is the Meet appliance, which is a pre-setup environment with an integrated user management that you can just download, put on your own hypervisor and manage and use from there. But Meet is also available, for example, as a container or as distribution packages, so you can do an old-style traditional package installation. The hosted edition of Copano Meet is available at splash.meet-app.io, and from there you can simply choose the room name that you want to use, and then um, share this link with everyone that you want to have a meeting with. No account sign-up required, no plugin installation necessary. But if you want to have full control over your meeting, then you of course want to rerun Meet on your own environment. And this is what we're going to talk about today. To get started with the appliance, you first need to download it from the Univention homepage. For this, you go to univention.com, select Products, Univention App Center Catalog. And here you will find a wide range of different applications that you can simply install on your existing Univention system. The quickest way would be to simply search for Meet. And then click on the details page. Here you will find a short description of Meet and what it includes. And um, also the requirements that you need to fulfill. To continue, simply select the appliance image that best suits your current environment like, for example, the VirtualBox image. After importing the virtual appliance, you need to start it for the first time and answer a few questions for the general setup. This is what I'm going to show you now. After the virtual machine has booted, you can select the language you want to use and the locales you want to use. For this, you simply enter the nearest bigger city and then you still have the possibility to select or modify the local system locale and the keyboard layout if it doesn't match your current environment. You can choose to obtain an IP address from a DHCP or select your own. And then you are at the stage where you can choose if you want to manage your users on that same Univention system or if you want to join it to an existing Univention domain 
or if you want to join it to an existing Active Directory. Afterwards, you are asked to give the name for your organization, which is then used to um, select the, the LDAP base domain, give your email address, this is required for a free license that you will receive, and select the password for the administrator user. On the next step, you still have the possibility to customize your domain setup name. And once that is done, you just need to click OK, and the Univention installation will then take a few more minutes to copy everything to your local, and local hard disk. And afterwards, you're almost ready to go. And that's it already for the setup. Just click on Finish. On the next page, you will find the IP address of your Univention system, which you can now open in your browser to continue the final configuration. On a Univention system, you can manage all your users and all the settings of that system from a web-based interface, which means that inside of the Univention UI, you have the possibility to create additional users. But also all the settings related to Copano Meet itself can be done through the Univention App Center from the Univention Web UI. You simply go to App Settings in the Univention App Center, and from there you can modify the settings you need. Let's have a short look at the configuration. From the Univention App UI, you simply go to Systems and Domain Settings. Here the system will ask you for a username, and the username is simply Administrator, and the password is the password that you have previously set in the installation procedure. From here, you can simply select Users, and then Users, to create additional users for your Univention installation. For this, you can simply click on Add, select where that user should be created, and then specify the name. And the password for that user. If you make the mistake and don't put the same password twice, the UI will remind you of that. And like I said, all the configuration of Meet itself can be done from the App Center as well. For this, you go to Install Applications, select Copano Meet, and then select App Settings. From within the app settings, you have the possibility to specify the host name if it doesn't match your environment. Um, and you have the possibility to enable or disable guest access. Guest access is by default disabled. And if you want to share meetings with others outside of your organization, you need to select yes here in the settings. Here you can also specify configuration for the turn server. Like for example, if you have a subscription with Copano and you want to use a different turn service there, or if you're running your own turn server, like for example CoTurn, then you can configure that turn server here. To apply your changes, simply click Apply. A few more words on some specific configuration option. DNS, or specifically the host name that is used for Meet, is quite important inside of Meet. This is the case because, for example, Meet needs to know where to redirect users to lock them in through OpenID. But it also needs to know its host name so that it can securely access its own REST API. So if you're using a different host name than the default Univention host, then from within the app settings, you can change this FQDN or fully qualified domain name. In a normal Univention installation, the OpenID provider would run on a specific subdomain called UCS SSO. In the case of the appliance, we already configured it so that the OpenID provider is running on the same domain as Meet itself. So this means that you just need to take care of one simple domain. Another important aspect of video meetings is the turn server. The turn server is there to help the users establish a direct connection between each other. And in the worst case, when, for example, due to firewall configuration, no direct connection can be established, then the turn server will be there to relay the communication for the users. But since WebRTC is used and the turn server is simply just there as a relay, the communication itself will still be end-to-end -end encrypted. Inside of the Meet appliance, we already configure a turn service for the user. This turn service is just provided as is without any guarantees though. 
So if you want to use a more reliable and um, guaranteed available churn service, either buy a subscription from Copano or configure your own churn service. With all the configuration out of the way, let's have a first look at using Meet. As a reminder, the only things that you really need for Meet to work is a modern web browser, which could be Google Chrome, which could be Firefox, or browsers based on the Chromium project, like Chromium itself, or for example, Iridium. For guests, there is no requirement to create accounts. Only your own users will need to have accounts, but then from there can invite guests. And you also don't need to install any applications to use Meet. Um, but if you use it regularly, then you could make use of the progressive web app functionality to install a link to your device. And from this link, you can then easily access Meet. And whenever Meet is updated on your server, that app also automatically gets the newest version. To use Meet, simply go back to the default start page of your Univention installation. Here you will find a link to your Meet installation. If you access this page through, for example, the IP address, clicking on the link will also automatically forward you to the configured domain name. For the login page, you simply need to use one of the users that you have previously created or, for example, the administrator account. Hello. Let's do a quick tour of Copano Meet. With Meet, you have the possibility to go to Contacts to see a list of all the other users on your server. And here you can just click any name to initiate a call. And when that user has Meet open, then they will receive the call from you and can choose to accept or deny. To make calls with more than one person, you simply click on New Call, Join or Create Group, give the name of the group, and if you want this group to be able to jo be joined by guests, you need to toggle this Allow Public Guest Access. And after clicking Join, you are already at the starting page, the landing page of this group. From here, you can decide to invite additional people by clicking on Invite to this group, which will open a dialog that asks for email addresses. And once you're done entering email addresses, you simply click Invite and your standard email program will open where you can finish the invitation email and finally send it out. Another way to invite people to a group call is through this Share Group Link button. This will simply paste the link to the group inside of your clipboard so you can, for example, paste it in a chat or add it to an appointment. Another few nice to know features about Meet. Within Meet, you have the possibility to go into settings. Here, for example, if you have a low bandwidth and you're just on your mobile device, you could, for example, switch Meet into the audio only mode. This mode disables all incoming and outgoing video, like for example, screen sharing, which means that you are just using a few megabytes per hour to do your call. You can also choose here to auto fit the video or not. With an auto fitted video, you don't see gray borders around the video that you receive. That also means that some portions of the video will be cut off. If you disable auto fit, you will see the full transmitted video. And here you also have the possibility to go into additional settings, like for example, to select the right webcam, the right microphone, or even the default speaker. Screen sharing is done in Meet through the Screen Share API. And if your browser supports this, which would be the case with modern versions of Google Chrome and Firefox, you will see the Share Screen button here. Clicking on it will open a dialog from your browser to select which screen or which application you want to share. After you have clicked Share, that screen will be transmitted to the person that you're currently calling with or the group that you're currently calling with. To stop sharing, simply press stop sharing or again here on that share screen icon. Screen sharing is essentially available on all devices that offer the screen capture API, which on the other hand sadly means that on devices like Android phones or tablets or even iPhones and iPads, screen sharing is currently not available but you are still able to receive a screen, you simply cannot share your own. I've now shown you how you can install Meet and how you can use it, but why do you want to use Meet? Meet is good for your privacy. All the data that you exchange with other persons in a call is end-to-end -end encry encrypted through the means of WebRTC. And even in the worst case where traffic needs to be relayed through the turn server, it really acts just as a relay and doesn't break end-to-end -end encryption. There is no data processing anywhere besides the client. There is currently no uh, SFU involved, no video bridge that would need to decrypt the data and therefore could be a third party that could record 
um, your call or make it available to any other third party. And with a self-hosted meet, a self-hosted turn and your self-hosted identi identity through OpenID Connect, you have everything under your control on your premises. And therefore, Meet is also good for your own digital sovereignty. There is, again, no data processed on the server side. It's all inside of your own organization. It's using open standard and standards and APIs like, for example, WebRTC or OpenID Connect. And Meet is 100% open source and runs on your own standard hardware. And with it being self-hosted, Meet can fulfill the highest degree of digital sovereignty. And Meet does not only give you a high de degree in digital sovereignty, no, it also integrates with other applications. Regardless if you're already a Copano customer and use Copano Groupware or, not, or you're using, for example, Microsoft Exchange, you can use Meet and simply use it with your existing tools. OpenID Connect is used for a single sign-on integration, which means that other applications using the same OpenID provider can give your users a single sign-on experience where they just need to sign into one application once and then are automatically signed, for example, into Meet again. And if you're a developer, then you can use Glue.js to visually integrate Meet with your own application. And that already brings us to the end of this webinar. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please make sure to leave them in the comments below. Thank you.